So just like that, somehow it's nearly the end of the year. It's November. So that means it's time for me to review what the boxing this year has been like. And in my opinion, it's been a great year for boxing, as I'm going to describe. We've had some great scraps. We've had some huge upsets. We've had great entertainment. We've had kings dethroned. We've had new kings coming up to take their places. We've had mega fights. We've had small fights that have exceeded expectations. All in all, I think it's been a great year for boxing. And I'm going to go and give my top five contenders for fight of the year. And then I'm going to, and then I'm going to give some honourable mentions and then come to my decision. But first, I just want to build up some excitement for the rest of the fights this year. Because although it feels like a lot of the big ones have happened. We've had Usyk Fury 1. We've had Crawford. Imagine what we've had Bivol Better Biev. There is still some really exciting fights. So, so this weekend, we've got the Boots and Bam double. And Bam is a really exciting pound-for-pound pound star. You know, he took care of Sonny Edwards, who's also fighting later this year. So Mike Tyson, Jake Paul, which I'm not really a fan of. I don't think a lot of boxing hardcore fans are. Ramirez versus Billum Smith. I'm really excited for this fight. I think Billum Smith's really good. Everyone seems to think they can beat him, but then you just can't beat him. I think he's got a good resume. Akoli, Riagpour, two really solid wins. You know, revenge against Riagpour as well. Everyone was saying before that fight, Riagpour was going to knock him out. But Billum Smith boxed really well, just kept him moving. I think Riagpour was a bit overwhelmed by the big occasion, but that was a solid win for Chris Billum Smith. Who I want to see him fight Obataya. And I assume that is the aim if he gets for Ramirez. Who has a little bit of a padded record. Didn't hear that from me. Sonny Edwards, Galau Yafai. That's another really exciting fight. Sonny Edwards always brings the smoke. That's on November the 30th. Liam Paro, Richardson Hitchens. That's another big fight at the super lightweight scene. And it looks like the winner of that is likely, possibly going to fight Jack Catterall. For their world champion belt. On the same night, there's another Frank Warren Super 70 card headlined by Denzel Bentley versus Brad Pools. I think I'm going to talk about Brad Pools, I think, was in one of the fights of the year against Nathan Haney. Two 12 round wars. And Denzel Bentley got the mentality of a champion, always wants to smoke, always wants the hard fights. And then, obviously, on the 7th 21st, it's the Eustick Fury rematch. A decent undercard. I think it just needs one more big fight. I think if it had like a Bacoli Caballel fight on it, that would give it like the elite Saudi undercard status. But all in all, I think they've done quite a clever job with the undercard. I think Johnny Fisher versus Dave Allen's going to get some of the more casuals involved. Bokachuk Majumov is going to be a war, along with some of the other fights on there. And then on Christmas Eve, we've got Anoue fighting Sam Goodman. Credit to Inoue, this guy fights all the time. I think that's how fighters should be, you know. You should fight as much as possible in a short career and then get out. And Inoue's fought, what, three, four times this year? And it's just making me a big fan of Inoue. I think if you want to get, like, sort of English or American people on your side, you know, the you know media in England or America, well, I don't know about America, but in England certainly doesn't talk about Inoue as much as, like, Fury, Joshua... So, you know, staying consistent is just really going to help you build up your profile. So, yeah, as I said, still lots to look forward to this year. But so far, what are my fight of the year contenders? Well, I'm going to start with the big five. And I think number one, without doubt, has to go to Usyk versus Fury. Obviously, there was a lot of talk before this fight. Is Fury washed? You know, he severely underperformed against Ngani. He dropped him, he embarrassed himself in that fight. Is Usyk too small? But... It lived up to the hype. You know, it was an exciting fight that ebbed and flowed towards the fourth round or the fifth round. A lot of people were like, oh my God, Fury's going to win this. But Usyk did what he did and he brought it back. He nearly knocked out Tyson Fury in the ninth round, hurt him more than anyone else had hurt him before. And obviously Fury did really well to stay in the fight, hear the final bell. A close fight, but a deserved win to Usyk, you know. The first undisputed title fight in, what was it, 20 years. It lived up to the expectations. You know, we had a clear winner. It wasn't like a frustrating draw. So without a doubt, Usyk Fury has to be a contender. I think the next most obvious shout is obviously Joshua versus Dubois. A lot of the boxing casuals had Joshua a heavy favourite. 
Some of the more hardcore boxing fans definitely gave the boy a chance, but I feel like the boy was definitely an underdog going into this fight. Everyone was talking about how this is going to be the best version of Josh Stewart we've ever seen. You know, he wiped out Ngannou, good win over Volin. But the boy, he slayed the king. He showed everyone there is a new world champion. And it's me, Daniel Dubois. I think the shock of the fight, how, you know, Dubois just had his way for five entire rounds. No one saw it like that. What was it? Four or five knockdowns. The first man to ever fully knock Joshua out. Just, you know, a really exciting fight. You know, you were enthralled from about 10 seconds in when Dubois landed that heavy shot. The shock, the drama, the occasion. Without a doubt, this has to be the contender for one of the fights of the year. I think number three, it has got to be better be of Bivol. You know, this was a this was a chess match. This was a really high octane, high boxing IQ fight. And I think the the controversy, well not really controversy, because it wasn't really a robbery, but I think like the closeness of it. Yeah, it was still exciting. Makes this one of the fights of the year. You know, the ways that people were debating it for days after showed that, you know, it was a really exciting, technical, high level fight. It wasn't boring. It was technical. So I think without a doubt, this has to be one of the fights of the year. Better Biv, he had that perfect record, 20 wins, 20 knockouts. Bivol had a great resume. Never looked close to losing in his career. He'd only be heard by Joe Smith when he mistook the 10 second bell for the end of the round bell. Lived up to the expectations, close and exciting. I think the next two might shock some people, but you know, this is just my opinion. You don't have to agree with it, but for me, Haney versus Garcia was definitely one of the fights of the year. The build-up was so entertaining. You know, Ryan Garcia, was he drinking on the way in? Was he losing his mind? Kevin Haney was rattled. He said he was going to kill Ryan Garcia. The build-up was fascinating, so entertaining. Ryan Garcia is a great talker. You know, people thought he was crazy. Maybe he was a little bit crazy. And then the huge upset of the fight... You know, knocking down Devin Haney, who was deemed to be the new Floyd Mayweather after winning every round against Pro Grey. I just thought that was such an exciting fight. I love the ups. I love, you know, the the upset. Everyone wrote Garcia off. The build up was entertaining. Obviously, the drug the drug scandal. Maybe Ryan being a bit overweight. Maybe that could upset some people. But I thought that just added to like the whole you know controversy, chaotic nature of the fight, and I love that. I love a bit of chaos. I love the drama. I love an upset. So for me, definitely one of the fights of the year. The next fight, which again, I think might surprise some people, but listening to it live, this was a scrap. This was a really exciting fight. And that is Joe Joyce versus Derek Chisora. This was a really, really exciting fight. Really competitive. Both fighters were really tired. Honestly, I thought Chisora was out of it. He looked on the verge of getting knocked out. And then just out of nowhere, he knocked Joe Joyce out. No, he didn't knock him out. He knocked him down, which eventually won the fight. Towards the end, you know, Derek Chisora was absolutely gone. And there was just something so delightful in seeing, you know, someone give his absolute all in that ring. Probably a slight upset in Chisora winning. You know, he gave absolutely 100% of his heart. He left it all out in that ring. Especially someone, you know, who's seen as a gatekeeper. To see him get a big win on his record. Although Joyce was, you know, slightly under decline. I thought that was a great win. I thought it was a really exciting fight. So for me, I think it does deserve to be one of the fights of the year. But obviously, you don't have to agree with me. You can have a different opinion. So now on to the honourable mentions. And then at the end, I'll give my, like, I'll give my fight of the year. So the honourable mentions. I guess the big fight, the big Saudi card I didn't talk about was... Majumov versus Crawford, but I just found, I found the fight was too tentative. You know, I think both guys had so much respect for the other person's power. They didn't really sort of get going until like the later rounds. So for me, although, you know, Crawford's a big name in the sport, I don't think you could quite give a fight of the year because of the tentative nature of it, but probably an honourable mention. I feel like Nick Ball deserves an honourable mention as well. He had that real war with Raymond Ford, which could, you know, definitely be in the top five fight of the year. Ray Vargas, he ugly should have won. And then he walked through Rios in a devastating display with a great knockout at the end. So Nick Ball, I think, deserves a shout out. Again, Craig Richards versus Hutchinson. That was another great fight. I love the way Hutchinson talks. He's so entertaining. Loads of boxers can learn from him. You know, 
he talked his shit and he backed it up. You know, he it was a massive upset, you know, he completely outclassed Richards, his difficult style. That was another really entertaining fight that I was that I loved to watch live. One of the smaller mentions was Heaney Nathan Heaney versus Brad Pauls. That but this is on the Magnificent Seven Guard. Again, this was a really great scrap, right? The first one was a twelve round war. The second fight Pauls defeated Heaney in the twelfth round. You know, this is like a rocky storyline, right? You know, getting the opponent out of there in the twelfth round. You know, we've seen people like Cole Frotch do it in the past, but that was again another really exciting fight that ended dramatically. I think the last honourable mention would be Anderson Bacoli, you know. All the Americans were talking up Anderson, talking about how he's the next big thing in boxing. And, you know, I think a lot of English fans, British fans, knew how good Bacoli was. And, you know, Bacoli dropped him three or four times. And, I mean, this, these American referees, I swear they want to see the fighters die in there. Like, why do you keep it going? He was dropped three or four times. I mean, credit to Anderson for getting up, but just stop the fight after two knockdowns, you know. He clearly... Wasn't going to win that fight. So that definitely annoyed me, the refereeing performance and that. But, you know, I think just for the upset nature of it, probably a worthy mention for fight of the year. But to conclude, in my opinion, I think just for me, how I value entertainment, chaos, drama, the huge upset of it. I think for me, Garcia versus Haney was my fight of the year. Such an entertaining build-up. Was Ryan Garcia crazy? Was he not crazy? Was Haney going to be the new Floyd Mayweather? You know, I did not see that upset coming at all. I've been pretty good with my fight predictions this year, but to get it that wrong, I was truly amazed. You know, to see someone as defensively minded as Haney getting knocked down three times and losing the aftermath was dramatic. Was Ryan cheating? Was he not cheating? <laughs> what did he say? Was it, Ash was it some dodgy supplements? Was it ashwagandha? You know... When you look into it, they didn't find it in his hair follicles. So it's probably just a little amount. You know, him being overweight, the drinking. I just found it so entertaining. I love the upset nature of the fight. But, you know, I feel like any of the big five that I mentioned could easily be five of the year. Just sort of depending on what you value most as a boxing fan. Do you like entertainment? Do you like the sweet signs? Do you like an upset? Do you like a war? Do you like a one-sided shutout? But for me, that is my fight of the year. So yeah, leave me your thoughts in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.